almost left out. Hopefully this sounds okay. The, the waves down here are crazy. Like, look at the water line. Right there. Normally it's like really tranquil and nice down here, but so yeah, we'll see how we go. So I feel like we haven't done a crazy awesome future space topic for a while. So let's discuss the uh, Kardashev scale, Dyson spheres, and Matrioska brains. Let's go. So the Kardashev scale was devised by Nikolai Tesla, who was a Soviet astronomer, as a way to kind of categorize uh, civilization's advancement based on the amount of energy they can harness. So on the Kardashev scale, there are three types of uh, civilization. Type 1, Type 2, and Type 3. And this is Earth, clearly. At around 0.7, I think. So type 1 civilization can harness all the energy of its own planet. So that means like all solar that hits the, the planet, um, wind, water, waves, the entire energy of the entire planet, geothermal. Carl Sagan thought that uh, human species were probably at about 0.7 on the Kardashev scale, so not quite harnessing the full energy of the planet yet, but getting there. And a type 2 civilization can harness all the energy of its own star, its host star. So that means like capturing all the radiating energy, and that's when we'll discuss Dyson spheres and Matrioska brains. Type 3 probably should be the size of this entire rock, but um, so a type 3 civilization is able to harness the entire energy of their galaxy, which is pretty nuts. And there have been other uh, amendments and additions to the scale. So some people say like type 4 possibly, where they're able to harness the entire energy of the universe. And type 5 is where they're just basically gods and just able to change the universe at will. So why would you want to harness that much energy? Well, I think it, it just comes down to processing. I mean, you look at our species already, we're going to very quickly, you know, become a digitized AI type species. I think knowledge is one of those things where it's, it's infinite. You can't have absolute, pure, 100% knowledge. The, that concept doesn't really exist, I don't think. But energy is finite, and so that's interesting. Even with our species, you can look at the, the advancement and kind of how much energy we've been able to harness, and it kind of correlates with our technological advancement, I think. With energy, we're able to like process and, and refine raw resources into products, and now we're in the stage where, with more energy, we're able to compute faster and just basically have more computational resources. And computation really just comes down to brute forcing problem sets and finding patterns in data. Um, I mean, at our scale, it makes sense for like machine learning and trying to solve different business case problems. At a larger scale, it works as well. A type 3 civilization, even with all its advancements, still has the major looming issue of how do you reverse entropy, because there's going to be a heat death of the universe, so the existential threat kicks in, they've got to process it. To solve problems, you need computation, and to run computation, uh, you need energy, so it makes sense. And it, it seems like it's an inevitable trend, it's not going to stop computation and energy, we always need more. Okay, so then this brings up the concept of the Dyson Sphere, which is really cool. So a Dyson Sphere is essentially just a mega structure where you wrap the entire sun in some type of solar panels, but a little bit more advanced than that, to capture all the energy at the source. So what you do is you mine nearby asteroids and you bring them in closer to the sun, um, and you'd also probably mine and convert planets into more useful material, and then basically form solar panels around the sun. So you start with a few kind of advanced solar panels, essentially absorbing the radiation of the sun, and they'd orbit the sun, and then you start off small, but eventually you get more and more until it entirely wraps it. Mentioned recently there's some discussion about a particular star where they saw a, an irregular dip in its, um, in its luminosity, in its brightness, um, and they, one scenario could be a Dyson Sphere. It's unlikely that it is, but it's pretty cool because that's what you'd expect to see. Like, a Dyson Sphere would take a long time to build and gradually the star would get dimmer and dimmer in the night sky until it almost disappears. Um, so whoever starts seeing stars just starting to disappear in the sky, we should start getting worried because it means that alien species are just kind of wrapping every star in Dyson Spheres and absorbing its energy. Okay, so then from Dyson Sphere you get this Matrioska brain concept where you essentially have multi-layers of, of Dyson Spheres wrapping the star like a, like a Matrioska doll. And this one makes rational sense as well because if you've, got, if you've got a Dyson Sphere and you're transmitting power back to your host planet to compute with it, you, you still, you know, those physical laws actually still kick in so you're losing a lot of energy in that transmission. And so you may as well just compute at the source. You may as well just have a bunch of Dyson Spheres wrapping the star, absorbing as much energy as possible and compute within those Dyson Spheres. So you've got this massive, like, compute and then if all these presumptions hold true, uh, when a species basically, you know, mind uploads and merges into this single kind of, like, digital orb, or whatever, <laughs> you may as well, like, go to the sun. I mean, because if, if the party's at the sun, if all the computation's happening there, and it still takes eight minutes for you to transmit information from the sun to Earth, then you're missing out on a lot of data and information. And then that brings up a lot of thoughts about, like, the outward expansion versus inward expansion of the universe. I mean, our typical sci-fi view is, like, these generational ships where we're going to spend generations traveling to the nearby star system. But if the speed of light is a true limiting factor and we can't bypass that, we can't just send information faster than the speed of light, then, you know, even the nearest star system is four years away. 
think of how much this has already changed uh, in the last four years and how much is likely to change in the next four years on Earth. Um, now, if you have the scale of a star and you're computing at that level and that speed, imagine what four years is. And so there's this theory that the reason why we don't see evidence of intelligent life in the universe is because they haven't bothered to expand out with them. It's expanded inwards down to the micro nano femtotech level. Even now we know that the lower you go down the kind of scale of things, um, down into like the quantum level, uh, the faster you can process and the less energy is required to do that processing. And so maybe we never leave our solar system, we just convert all the energy of the sun, all the energy of the planets, and take all that matter and just kind of like turn it into the ultimate computational system and just live in that. And then simulate our own universe as <laughs> Anyway, just some random thoughts, it's not for yours, at future. Have a good day guys.